Johns Hopkins has found that lockdowns have had little public health effects, but have had a major negative impact to society as a whole. Data expert Justin Hart joins us now to discuss. Justin, good to talk with you. Ginger, great to be with you tonight. My goodness, I feel like we should rewind the last two years because you've been saying on this program exactly what the study is now backing up, despite other media reports saying that the findings are shocking. So is this really shocking information to you? Uh, not terribly shocking, but more validation. We're very proud to see uh, Johns Hopkins University tackle this massive project this study, which took about 18,000 studies, narrowed it down to about two dozen high quality data driven studies. And from those were able to determine that the lockdowns, the stringencies, the NPIs, the non-pharmaceutical inventions of masks, when they look at all the geographies and all the studies done, did nothing to quell the COVID-19 mortality and deaths. And that's a bit of validation because we've been saying that here on this program to you guys for the past two years. Well, let's take a look at some of the findings from the study. One of the first quotes, lockdowns contributed to reducing economic activity, raising unemployment, reducing schooling, causing political unrest, contributing to domestic violence and undermining liberal democracy. Respond to that. Yeah, that's the flip side of this. It didn't help with narrowing down deaths and it sure caused a lot of pain for a lot of Americans. I got a text some months ago from a friend of mine in Orange County. His parents both died, neither of them from COVID. They died because they were too scared to go to the hospital. One had an undiagnosed cancer. One of them had an undiagnosed blood disease. The fear that was rampant throughout our population led to massive distortions as to what the actual risks were to people. And it caused havoc in our daily lives. You know, I look back a hundred years ago to a record of the 1918 pandemic. And someone put it succinctly when they were talking about masks. The American people are willing to do whatever it takes, but they dislike greatly being told afterwards that it was to no effect. And that's where we are right now. These massive interventions, the stringencies, the lockdowns, the stickers up the aisle to go one way, the plexiglass, all of it amounted to no reduction and to, frankly, quite a lot of pain and a lot of distrust in government now. And I think the speech impediment issue, especially for the kids, you know, that, I mean, literally have been one to four years old wearing a mask. I think we're going to be seeing that impact. Again, I want to show another finding from the studies. Take a look at this. Our study fails to demonstrate significant positive effects of mandated behavioral changes, of course, being the lockdowns. This should draw our focus to the role of voluntary behavioral changes. What do you say about that one? But can you all harken back to that one moment just north of us, I think in Newport Beach, where some lone surfboarder has disobeyed the stay-at-home orders mm. and the police are chasing him down, mm. robbing him down. Remember we used to go through these terrible mundane issues where the, the, the state said, okay, you can go to the beach, but you can't stand still. That happened. That nonsense happened, and it's just ridiculous to note that we went through that for two years, and the people who took the grunt of it and are bearing the grunt of it now are, as you say, our kids who are still masked to the hilt and dealing with quarantines left to right. My own children have been home, I think, maybe two weeks these past uh, two months uh, as the quarantines have come, not for them being sick at all, but for some exposure that they had. And none of that makes any sense, especially while other states are doing the same. And there's no difference in the case rate among children. There's no difference in the fatality rate among children or among any adults. We should get back to normal very quickly. The data is out. It's pretty interesting to see that the Super Bowl held in Florida last year had no mask mandate. But this year, you know, after the vax in Los Angeles, in California, we've got the mask mandate. Another finding from Johns Hopkins Research is it says the costs to society must be compared to the benefits of lockdowns, which our meta analysis has shown are marginal at best. So they're actually taking in some data here. Pretty interesting. Yeah, it is very interesting. One of the data points that they tackle and that other people have tackled are this, you know, ubiquitous plexiglass everywhere. We had that as a major stringency control that it was going to impact and, and help stop the spread. It turns out it didn't. It actually made things worse. The CDC quietly rescinded that order or that recommendation in March of last year. 
but how many offices and retails and stores do you know that have taken down their plexiglass? None that I know. They still are up there, and it seems like every place I go into is going to be robbed by a bank or something. It's uh, it's distracting. It's terrible. Uh, it's a terrible environment to live in here, and uh, I, I'm hoping that we can quickly quickly come to, to age here. We had 300,000 people net leave the state last year. I'm guessing when 2020 number, 2021 numbers come in, it's going to be drastic. Well, do you think that any of the uh, policymakers who definitely were on the side of the lockdowns, the plexiglass, the masks, do you think they're going to now see this steady and go, maybe we need to reevaluate? Look, I, I just want them to feel comfortable in making these decisions. It seems like the only thing keeping them from doing so is somehow giving them an option to save face. I don't know what it will take. The data is not there. They have nothing to support them. And yet I would love them just to slink away and quietly let these things expire, but do so now. I mean, our kids deserve a lot better. They they are treated so dramatically here. They're eating outside and here in sunny California, we can approach that. We've had a little cold weather, but imagine your kids in below freezing weather, not being able to talk to each other, tethered up outside for 10 minute breaks so they can eat something and then putting their mask on between bites. That's happening in Boston, in New York, in North Carolina, in a lot of places. We need to stop this nonsense. The data is out. It doesn't help. And we know that for sure now. We just need to stop this. Yeah, especially since you're breaking that sterile barrier that was supposedly uh, created by wearing the mask in the first place when you take it on, put it on, uh, take it off. Uh, Justin Hart, thanks for joining us tonight. Of course, folks, we're going to have this study from Johns Hopkins posted on our website. Have a good night. Good fresh haircut, by the way. Looks nice. Ah, thanks, Ginger. Take care. <laughs> you too.